Are we uh, are we recording? We are recording. We're live, dude. What's up? Travis Charles in the building. Ugh. Dude. That's, that's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling you I like that bomber. I know, man. It's fucking Walmart's finest. That's fire, dude. Yes. If you put a Columbia logo on it, it's a $120 jacket. I know. What is the difference? Literally. It's yeah. nothing. I put on one today at the mall with John. Yeah. And I was like, it is the exact same feel, fit, everything. But this just says foundry on it yeah so <laughs> you know i just brought my i just got my girl a columbia jacket like a fleece jacket and a hat to match and yeah it was pricey yeah. definitely was a patagonia fleece is 150 dollars. that's crazy dude no, dude like those north face and nike jackets i've been looking at i've been shopping around 150 200 bucks for those nicer ones bro buy the cheap ones and find you an old lady that can embroider yeah <laughs> just put it Get on it there 20 bucks might as well make your own logo at this yeah. point you know bootleg what I'm saying? shit's in bootlegs <laughs> in do your own brand bro be a entrepreneur. Uh, now, I know we were talking about some stuff off mic beforehand. I wanted to tell you a story about Wiley's. Um, back when I was 18, I went to Wiley's with my mom, my stepdad at the time, and it was the first comedy show I'd ever been to. And I, I told Mike Wells this story, too. Uh, his cousin, Kenny Smith, which you, you actually know Kenny. Yes. He was headlining at the time. And I, went, I was, like, super young, and I was, like, into, like, writing music and stuff back then. But I thought to myself, like, damn, I was like... I. I really want to be like that someday. I was like, I don't know what this guy is or what he's doing. This is not, I've never seen anything like this. This is like, he had the whole room moving, dude. And it was, he's, he's he killed. This is t- what, 15 years ago. Bro, he's an undeniable beast on stage. Beast on stage. Just very poor at burning bridges. But that's not, yeah. See, I, I've heard that too. That's, and that's, that's neither here nor there. But the point of the story was he was a headliner that night. And I, my, my stepdad actually bought a couple of his shirts that said, fuck you, like yep. F-U-H-C-U-E. Mm-hmm. Super funny. Uh, but the point was, I was talking to the bouncer in the lobby while we were waiting to go in. And he was telling us a story about when Rob Snyder was touring before he really got on and got big. Um, he was still touring the club circuits. And a lot of comics came to Wiley's back in the day because Bob and Tom... And the radio station and everything, or the TUE was next door, so people would pass through there and then do the show. They had a bigger network. Um, so Rob Snyder's on the scene, and he's driving uh, he's driving Dan Lafferty's car. Do you know who Dan Lafferty is? Mm-hmm. So he's the original owner of Wiley's, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that's what I heard too. That's how I understand. And Dan Lafferty loans Rob Snyder a car because he flies into town. And uh, Rob Snyder forgets Dan Lafferty's name, and he gets pulled over by the Dayton Police Department. Rob Snyder goes to jail because he can't tell the police whose car he's driving, and he's not on TV at this point. He's not famous. Yeah, he, <laughs> he doesn't have it. Like he can't just say, "Look me up." You know, it's there's no internet. This is yeah. this is in the early '90s, probably. Uh, so apparently, Rob Snyder was in the tank for like six hours, four or five, six hours, whatever it was. And then they said that he came running down the hallway and kept banging on his door and said, Dan Lafferty, his name is Dan Lafferty. And so they called Dan Lafferty, and he confirmed the story. They let Rob Snyder out of Dayton County, Montgomery County Jail. That's funny. But here's what was here's the, the big catch of this whole story and what made me think, uh, I guess, highly of the club at the time and even till now because it was like, it's such a small world. I'm a big fan of Adam Sandler. I'm sure you are too. It's like, who doesn't love Happy Madison? So if you see the movie Happy Madison, the very first scene of the movie. Billy uh, Madison. Billy, is it Billy Madison? Billy Madison. I always Happy conf- Madison. Happy Madison confl- is, is his production company. Yeah. Okay, I always conflate the two. Um, but I, I, so I, but I, love, <laughs> I love Adam Sandler. But, so basically, the very first scene of Billy Madison, uh, Rob Snyder said he'll never forget Dan Lafferty's name till the day he dies. He said, I'll never forget that name again, right, because of what he went through. So when you see the scoreboard in the very first cut of Billy Madison, the number one player is Dan Lafferty. So go back and watch that, people at home too or who are listening. Dan Lafferty, the original owner of Wiley's Comedy Club, his name is on the scoreboard. And it says, and, and, and if you listen in the background, it actually says the first line of the movie is now teeing off Dan Lafferty. That's what the announcer says in the background. Hmm. So I just think is that, that was, Happy Gilmore? It's, it, Happy Gilmore is the one where he's playing base, uh, golf. Yeah, Happy yeah, Gilmore's yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's not Billy Madison's where he goes back to school. Yeah. So yeah. then it's Happy, so Gilmore, Happy Gilmore, the one where he fights Bob so Barker. So you're just mixing yeah. movies together. I surely am. I'm missing the. I'm mixing the name with the uh, the the title with a different plot of the other movie. And the production company. When I was a kid, though, I would watch all those movies in a loop so often that it was like, I just yeah, I'm definitely I'm tired, bro. I don't know what you want me to say. 
I well, can't I'm pretty sure Rob Schneider's in all of his movies anyway, so. Well, Rob Schneider actually produced that movie, and that's why he did that. Uh, so, yes, he. I, I don't know if he paid for it or, or he was behind the camera or what, how that happened, but he was a little bit ahead of Sandler as far as age and stuff, right? Kind of. Kind of like you are to They to came me up at the same something. time. Yeah. So they're kind of like, I mean, yeah, he might be a little older than Adam, but. Yeah. No. Uh, if you use someone's name in a movie, it can just be a coincidence it's the same name, so they don't have to pay for that. No, yeah, and I don't know if it's just because he had a relationship with the owner and he thought he wanted to pay homage to him and it was a funny story. It's a good name, He might have told that, he, that, that, tell me that's not a bit. If you're a comic and you go get pulled over and some dude, that's a bit. That's a 30-minute story. Yeah. Look, uh, imagine him with the details. It took me five minutes to tell you. So imagine, oh, yeah. you know. That's a 20-minute bit for him. Easy, easy, and you could really play into <laughs> a lot of that stuff, like what the cop looked like or who the fuck was in the cell with you or whatever, oh, yeah. you know. Six hours. That's longer than I want to go to jail for. Have you ever been to jail? No. It's, it's not gotta, fun. You got to get caught. Yeah, you got to get caught. <laughs> You're like, I've been scamming for years. <laughs> you got to catch me first. That's what? why I say I don't have respect for the criminals that get caught. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to fucking, the ones that don't get caught, hell yeah, bro. Good for you. The, the ones that are in jail, like, you're an idiot. Here's the funniest thing about all those guys in jail. They always say that, too. They're like, you know, we're some of the smartest people in the world. <laughs> like, not re- criminals are some of the most intelligent people in the world. Not, Not really. You got caught. You might have thought of a good plan originally, right? Some of the best criminals are the smartest people. The people who don't get caught. Yes. yes. But there's just stories about the crime they did. Yeah. And they have no leads. That's the shit I fucking, I live for. Like documentaries and oh, stories I love about it. that. When, yeah. a, when someone gets away with so much like theft or like even murder, I'm like, fucking good for you, dude. Yes. Like, you did it right. Like, you're, you're saying like, yeah, the, the anarchy aspect to it. Does that is that what it is? Is it like the fucking because you're not supposed to be being able to keep your mouth shut, yeah, your whole life to where no one knows you did it, and then live a normal life where people love you and you have a family, but yet you're this other amazing dude on the side that just does whatever and no one knows about it. You're just like, ah. yeah, like or the ones that escape. Oh yeah, Hell it yeah. makes the me think that of like escape, like Dillinger. Like yeah, back in the day, like he was arrested here in Dayton. It must have been easy. Yeah, yeah, right there in uh, here in New Carlisle. Actually, there's a little building with his painting on it, and it was, used to be a bank that he robbed right here, five minutes from my. Well, that might be sounding stupid, but didn't Bonnie and Clyde come through Dayton, Ohio? It's a good possibility. I think, I think yeah, that, because Dayton was like a booming town. Yeah, can, they, we, can you can you fact check that they, for they us? They I did some stuff. That. I think they did I'm, some I stuff know, in Dayton. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that Dillinger and uh, we switched the cameras to your Google. Yeah. I know it's new. I, I want to. I'll do that once when I get it. Up. Okay, my bad. You're good. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that like oh, my load early. I, I'm pretty sure that like L- Lucky Luciano came through here quite a bit, and like like he was a gangster. But, yeah. Like I'm pretty sure it was just Dillinger who really robbed the banks out here. This place was a hub. I know in the John Dillinger film with uh, was it Johnny Depp or yeah yeah he they passed through Ohio a couple of times and they were in a couple of hideouts out here in the country. This is the sticks. It's just flats, yeah. farmland for miles. You know. Ohio. Ohio. You, are you originally from here? No. You're not. So what? Where are you from originally? Richmond, Virginia. And that's where you were born and raised? Lived there for 30, 31 years. Then we moved to Oklahoma for a year. Then I came up here. What brought you to Oklahoma? You were working out there? Took a job. Okay. In, in Richmond, and then all of a sudden they fucking moved everything to Oklahoma. And it was like, if you want to stay, you got to go to Tulsa. And I was like, I guess I'll try it. It would be interesting, right, to see Arizona. Is it Arizona, too? Or what's Tulsa? Is it Oklahoma? Yeah, Oklahoma. Okay, okay. so they weren't together yet, but Clyde made an appearance in Middletown. That's interesting. I was close. So, yeah. Like, I got, yeah. I you got, know Rob Lowe's from Middletown? Yeah. Yeah. Who's the dude? Oh, hold on. Um, oh, what the hell's his name? White Man Can't Jump, and he's in Venom now. Woody it's, Harrelson? Uh, Woody, Woody Harrelson's Harrelson. mom's in an uh, old folks home in Middletown. Really? Yeah. Uh, he comes, like, like, every once, once, twice a, once or twice a month to visit his mom. That's wild, though. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I know um, Charlie Sheen's dad also, right? Emilio. Whatever happened to Emilio? Rob Lowe. No, Emilio Estevez no, used to Sheen's actually dad's own dad's from a, Dayton. Um, Martin Emilio, Sheen. Emilio, Martin Sheen is from Dayton, but Emilio Estevez, I think, uh, it was either Washington Township or Centerville owned a property out there. Yeah, they're from here. They're from Ohio. Rob, they're Rob Ohio boys. Yeah. 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 So, a bunch of uh, them. Uh, like, half the, the main cast from the West Wing is from Dayton, Ohio. Rob Lowe. Really? Um, Martin Sheen. Uh, Allison Janney. Um She's the one that plays uh, the mom, or 
or the older, the grandma and mom. Yeah. The, the sitcom. When She's I, from Dayton. When I was a kid, I was too young to understand it, I think. <clears throat> but everybody, I remember people used to say, oh, shit, that new Martin Lawrence movie, Blue Streak, mm-hmm. has this guy from Dayton, Ohio, and a Dave Chappelle. People used to talk about Dave because Dave was like a Dayton comic. You know, he was a DC comic for sure, but he would he would be here because his family lived here. So he would like frequent this spot. Yeah. And I remember like being a kid and being like, holy shit, somebody from from my town can like be in a movie that's on like on TV and my parents are watching it and people are engaged. And <laughs> when I was coming up in Richmond, our big guy was D'Angelo. OK. Remember that dude from like the early 90s? The rapper? Like the R&B dude. Yeah. And everyone's like, he was from Richmond, Virginia. And then, no shit. I didn't know that. <laughs> Did you ever get any of his mixtapes or go to his shows? No, I didn't. It kind of missed, you missed the wave. I missed the wave of that. Like, back when I was coming up, it was like Lamb of God and Guar. Were they were from there, too? Big local people. Okay. But I never went to the shows. I wasn't into it then. Yeah. So. Yeah. Nope. Oh, if you could have Lamb seen of God's the original from there too. That's I heard that's probably one of the best shows that Bro, they, they literally played, there was a club called the um, the Flood Zone. And it was just like once a month, you'd be like, Guar's back in town. I'm like, they're here like every month. They live here. They live like three streets over. That's why they're here. <laughs> that's why I, they're I guarantee here. you it's packed out every oh, time. Oh, every time. I had friends that went and they'd come back with like, dude, I couldn't get the fake blood out of my hair last night. And like, they're the clothes. Yeah. You've Fuck. ever seen a Guar? I ruined. have. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. It's those people who wear like cosplay shit. Now there's a bar there. It's called Guar. It's kind of like bar. Slipknot, though, right? In a way. It's they was kind of. But they were always just... on Beavis and Butthead. Okay. If you watch old Beavis and Butthead episodes, Guar would always be on the TV. So they're like pre Slipknot. Oh, they're way pre Slipknot. Okay. Yeah, they're like Satan is fucking they were hardcore all v- metal shit. They were shit. all VCU art students. No, what's VCU? Virginia Tech? Virginia Commonwealth Vir- University. Okay. It's one of the biggest colleges in the country. And that was in the town that you grew up in? Yes. You grew up actually in Richmond, not like a suburb of Richmond? Like Richmond's like here and like th- seven miles one way is where I grew up. So it was like basically Richmond, but... You were like Eminem of yeah. Richmond. Yeah. You were on seven miles. I grew up on Nine Mile Road. Nine Mile Road? <laughs> I swear to God. Did you? Yeah. That's funny. So it's a bigger <laughs> city. What's the population like out there? Like what city would you compare it to? I don't think I've been to Richmond. Richmond is a lot like Dayton, but probably 10 times bigger. Is it like right on a river too? James River. Yeah. Yep. I seen it on the map. Yep. A lot of uh, historical stuff happened there. Okay. They <laughs> tore down all of our statues now and like, but yeah. Here's the deal. They're trying to get rid of the racism and all the Southern Confederacy stuff in Virginia. I'm like, then you have to wipe the whole city away. Yeah. Because every road is like Lee Avenue, Bunker Lane, Confederate Hills, Confederate Terrace. Like it's all these. Like every street name is Confederate. Yeah. And it's like you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of all of it. This is the thing. It's like. I was making this point to uh, Brent Bowser. He was on my podcast the other day, and uh, we were kind of disagreeing. And I wish I was. I wish I was able to make this point to him, but I was just. I was kind of defending what Chappelle was saying, but I was also. I was also saying basically, I think you should be able to say anything you want, as long as you're. You know, you're not punching down. You're being good hearted. You're being playful about it. Like this is the point that I wanted to make that I didn't get to say to him, but it makes me think of this with you. It's like if we can't look at those things and make fun of them or or deal with them or act like they're not act like they're real and like just fucking deal with it then how are we going to get past it so we can realize that we're all the same like how do you get past our differences if you just try to fucking erase history or act like this shit is not going on and there's no difference between us like it's i don't know bro people's opinions on comedy is it's always going to be different and my whole standpoint on anything comedy is the attempt at funny has to be there Right. Yeah. You can say you can say anything you want. Childhood cancer, you know, transgender. As long as it's funny and not hateful. The topic doesn't have to be funny. Jim Norton but, makes that. But people uh, saying that. you can't talk about, you know, you can't talk about a gay guy if you're not gay. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Like you have to hear my point of view before you tell me I can't. Right. You know, like I, here's like I've, I've always said this too. Like two gay guys can go, ooh, you sleep with a woman. That's gross. Mm-hmm. But I'm not allowed to think two guys sleeping together is gross. I don't care that they do it. Have fun. That's you, bro. Right. But I'm allowed to go, ooh, if I see you doing it. Like, that's that's just my natural reaction. Yeah. The same one you have to me going into a vagina. That grosses you out. Right. And that is okay. I don't care. But they think, I don't know, they think you're just being, like, you hate them. Right. Versus, like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of shit I hate. But, like. I don't care. I, I, I have this huge ability not to care. It's just the, I, I feel like all these ideas that we're like throwing around are just ways to get attention. And, and it, it comes down, it comes down to like how much, how offended can I be? Right. Because if I don't really have a voice, 
then I can if if there's something wrong, right? Then then you have to give me a second. You have to give me your time. People choose to be offended by something. Like if you hear something, you can you can one go. You know what? I know that person. They're not being hateful. Whatever. But some people hear something and go, "That offended me." But people say that's offensive, right? I yeah. forgot who said this quote, but they go, "You say the joke's offensive." No, no, no. The joke's not offensive. You were just offended by that joke. Other people were not offended by it. So it's not universally offensive. Yeah. It depends on your personal views or who you are. But the whole thing, like even with Chappelle, he was making saying stuff like, you can make fun of black people all day long. Yeah. No one gives a shit. Poor white people. Poor white people. Latinos. Mexicans, Asians, it doesn't matter. But once you attack certain other, you know, cultures or whatever, then all of a sudden you're you're an evil person. Yeah. But they were laughing at the joke prior to that. Right. You know, Everyone wants to fucking hate on something, cancel something. It's 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 human nature to do that kind of shit, man. But it's a crazy time to be in this business, isn't it? It really is. Especially if you're young, like trying to still make your your way and you're fucking like trying to like trying to get a following or whatever to try to get The problem is new comics right now, brand new comics are going about it so wrong. Yeah. They think just cuz they yell out certain like, you know, think like like I don't, want, I, don't want to, I don't want to say certain words. Social justice warrior behavior. Is that what you're no, saying? Like they're, they're virtue be, signaling? Well, that's one part of it. But the uh, other part is the comics are trying to be edgy. Yeah. So they don't understand how to make it funny. They're just saying kind of hateful shit. I mm-hmm. feel like when we went to that Go Bananas uh, open or the reopening, mm-hmm. um, that it was like a lot like that down in Cincinnati. Like as far as the, like open, the, virtue? The, new, the newer comics, the open micers and stuff like that, they were they're sensitive, more sensitive, very sensitive, and like. But see, that's there. The new comics in Dayton are trying to be super edgy, yeah, and like shocking, trying to get heard. And then when I tell them, like, bro, like you, like you shouldn't do that. Like I'm not saying you can't. You gotta get. You have to have a happy medium. Yeah, you know, there, there, there's certain people who don't understand that certain terms are offensive. At, in 2021, yes, we're still in thought bubbles. These people don't understand that certain words can be offensive to a large group of people, and I'm like, like, how dumb are you? Yeah, where have you been for the last seven to ten years? People miss the boat all the time. Like, I'm aloof to a lot of shit. Like, <laughs> I swear, dude, I, I miss the boat a lot. And then, but, but here's the point, though. It's like if you can be someone can explain something to you, and you can be reeducated. Like I was talking about that conversation I have with Brent Bowser. It's like he made some points. That made me definitely see it differently, or at least from another perspective, and, and it gave me a little bit of a new light on it from 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 someone from that community. So, it like it definitely helped, and he reeducated me in a way. But I'm not, I didn't change my stance. I still, I still back Chappelle because I back it for the sake of comedians and free speech. And once you start, once you start getting in that world, yeah. it, it gives me it, it's a problem for me because I. I want to be able to say whatever I want to say as long as I'm not hurting other people. I don't want to hurt anyone. That's never my intention. I don't think comedy is about hurting other people if no. you're doing it right. Like you said, there's like a there's like this new thing that everybody's doing where they are trying to be so offensive and over the top that it's not it's not received well. Yeah. And it's like if you're not well they received, they don't know how to do it. Yeah, they don't have enough life experience either. Life experience, stage, stage experience, time. reading an audience. Like, people have seen me perform. I can get away with some crazy shit on stage. Yeah, because you're not saying it for real. You're joking. I'm joking, but I also build a rapport with the people who are watching me before I attempt certain things up there. Yeah. If I feel like they're not going to roll with me, I don't go there. Right. But now I do this weird little, like, um, preface of, like, hey, do you guys care if I try a couple offensive jokes on you that I've written that are, you know, I find them funny, but I just want to make sure you guys, dude, the audience is going to always go, yeah. You bring them into your world. But now what I've done is I've given them the ability to laugh together. Yeah. No matter what I say now, if it's funny. But if they don't like it as a group, I can go, well, I asked you guys, you know, we're going to move on. Yeah. And they don't leave you. They don't leave you in a hole. You didn't dig. You addressed it. Like, I'm going to do some stuff that's touchy. And now they're okay with it. It's like permission. I asked permission. I'm going to do them either way. Yes. But now I've kind of put in their minds like, okay, I'm prepared for like what he's going to say next. Yeah, it's, I'm not catching them off guard. It's such a good thing to yeah. I was going to say that to let them get their guard down because otherwise it's like you. Everybody's got these blinders on all the time because of yes. the, what's indoctrinated in all of and us. If you have a hundred people workplace and on the news and and you do an offensive bit school. 
and 50 people like it and 50 people don't, you're going to get about 20 people laughing because laughter is contagious and everyone's looking around. Are they laughing? Can I laugh at this? Even if they find it funny. But now that everyone's on the same page, like something crazy's coming, yeah. you're going to get 75% of the people laughing at it because now they understand what you're doing. Dude, there's so much to stand up that never gets talked about mm-hmm. as far as building the rapport, like you said. Reading a room. Yeah. Knowing little tricks of the trade of like getting someone to understand what you're coming from, learning your voice, learning your cadence, clothing, hats, glasses, shoes, like everything about you is about your stage presence on, like to make him laugh. Yeah. And so many people don't get it. Right. No one teaches it. Yeah, you basically gotta I mean, you basically got to act like you're Hollywood when you like the way that you dress, but you got to also be humble and like and fucking work hard, dude. There's a lot of there's a lot to it. Yeah, a lot. A and when lot. I bring some stuff up to like comics that I've been doing it for seven to ten years that never really got like mentored, yeah, they go, bro, that makes so much fucking sense. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, man, like that's the shit I was taught when I was new. Like you got to dress like you're supposed to be on TV. You got to fucking trim your fucking beard. Yeah, don't wear a hat. Don't fucking squint your eyes. Don't do this shit. Don't fucking oh, it's so bright in here. Don't you know all that stuff? Wear clean shoes. If you if you make noise with your feet, wear nice shoes. Yeah. Wear pants that fit you. Wear a fucking shirt where your stomach's not hanging out the bottom of it. Right. You know, like so much stuff that when you see someone go on stage in shorts, sandals, fucked up dirty beard, or like their shirt, their belly button sticking out the bottom, it's like, bro, I'm not paying attention no more. Like, you're just fucking... I had a really bad coming to Jesus moment with that in Vegas. Really? Um, Somebody had actually called me out for wearing shorts. (laughs) Oh, shit. That's a Seinfeld thing. Because I got... like I just caught this uh, this mic last minute, and I was like, "Screw it!" I'm going. <laughs> I was like, "Screw it!" I'm just going to roll in there, and um, I was wearing camo cargo shorts, and uh, the guy hosting the thing after I got up there and I made a joke about another comic that had one leg. <laughs> um, he got up there and he just started ripping me a new one. He's like, was, "You would have been able to see his leg. Yeah, yeah, if you would have had no, pants that's, on." That's, so. that's, He's like, that's, that's he's like, like we don't looks, know if he has. He looks two. like he came from a Circus Survive concert, <laughs> and like, and just like all this weird shit, and like he just like dug into me for like a whole like two three minutes because I was wearing shorts. Hell yeah! And I've never worn shorts except one time at Carmichael's since then. What What would you say, Travis? Are like your top five stage rules? Like, like as far as. At et- stage etiquette and like things you would think about, like in, in no particular list at all, but just like think like if you had to tell new young comics coming up that were listening to this, no shorts, no shorts. That's a big one. Yes, move the mic stand behind you. Move the mic stand behind don't you. Don't play with the fucking cord. Yeah, you know, don't wrap it around your hand or around your neck. Like, don't nervous energy. Nervous energy does that. Yeah, right. I used to wrap it. I give. I'll give people a benefit of a doubt first few times. I get it. You're nervous. Yeah. Um. Do not shit on the venue. Don't start shitting everywhere. Like, if it's your first time, people are like, oh, I love, I love this place. Let's do it with the fucking decor, like, and just shit all over it. Yeah. You can make a joke. Oh, this place looks like the set of whatever. And that's, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like hookah, like the set of um, Stranger Things. It definitely did. Right? And that's, that's such a shithole place. Yeah. But we, they let us do comedy there. Everyone has to remember, these places don't need us to do comedy. They let us do comedy. It's true. It's a privilege. They can go, you know, got to come back ever again. They're going to make the same amount of money as they normally do. Yeah, it's usually 20 people there that don't buy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so they're letting us in their place. Yeah. They're being nice enough to allow us to use their stuff. Don't shit on it. Don't st- fucking slam the mic stand. Mm-hmm. I've seen Sean Latham broke two mic stands uh, two and a half, three weeks ago. I don't know, I don't know who that is. It was at Wiley's. He fucking just hit on the floor and just... During a joke. Just fucking snapped it. Yeah. They all break. Yep. They're not made of fucking, like, welded steel. They're aluminum. And the people who jam it in the fucking, when it's a twist, like, to twist it to up and down, yeah. they jam it in and they fucking rip it up. Bro, it's a plastic grommet in there. A little tiny piece of plastic. Around metal. Threading. That just tightens up. All it does is tighten and loosen. That's all it's meant for. Yeah. And they jam it in and they go, oh, mic stand broke. Well, you broke it. Yep. Don't drop the mic. Do not drop the fucking microphone. Until you're on TV doing a special and you're making shit tons of money. Yeah, I you're did. Not, I you did that at an open that mic recently. You're not like that good. Shit. And it wasn't even that good of a set. I was just doing it to be an asshole because <laughs> I was playing just an asshole like that day. Uh, because these things break. Yeah. Right. 
You spent money on these mics. You don't want them broken. This is true. You know, even though some of these mics at clubs are shit. Hey, these shirts, you can run a truck. You can run, a, run it over with a truck. That's what they say. Yeah. But um, I don't know what number I'm on, but that's, I mean, that's a bunch of them. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, this is good, dude. You know, it's a good, it's. Do original material. No one knows, right? And what, what do you say if, like, you are doing original material for you and then you see someone, uh, well, obviously more established and they're doing the same joke or something that's similar? Or, and how do, how do you also, how do you define similar? Like, is it the premise? Is it where they're going with it? Or? You will never find an original premise. Right. Because everything's been talked about. It's true. You know? There's only so many words. It's your take on, it's your joke about Netflix. It's your take on milk. Yeah. It's your joke about smoking. It's your perspective, and that's the only thing that makes it the, the art. Is What the happened to you? Talk about you, your life, your personal experience. Now, if you happen to have a joke that has to do with vaping... Yeah. Because you were vaping one day or someone next to you was vaping. That's not saying the next guy can't do a vaping joke. It just can't be the same vaping joke you do. Right. But when I say be original, bro, a lot of new comics do memes or old street jokes. And they just flip a few words around or change a name here and there. But it's the same fucking joke. That's just that's just hacking material. Yeah. Whenever I see it in a new comic, I don't get mad the first time at all. I'm like, they're brand new. A lot of fucking new comics do that. Just to get the hours in. Because you know it takes 10,000 hours to get good at the shit. A lot of new comics would do famous jokes. Yeah. They'll do Bill Burr. They'll I've do. seen them do it at Wiley's at a packed house. Yeah. And you know? And, and they, you're like, they, what they the murder. fuck? Yeah. And they get off stage and they think they're the shit. And then you got to fucking break their heart. Yep. You got to be like, hey, man, great stage presence. You know, you did it. But next time, bring your own material. And they'll get defensive usually because they don't understand. Then if you show someone all of their jokes, like literally, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so, and then they continue to do those jokes, that's when I don't give a fuck about them anymore. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I gave you a great shot. I showed you where you went wrong, and I did it very nice. I'll tell you what. Speaking of that, <laughs> I don't want to dox anybody. and we Don't can... say a name. Okay, I won't say a name, but there was a comic that it, I hadn't seen you in a while. This was probably like six months ago when they were doing the uh, – they were doing the mic at, I won't even say what mic it was. It doesn't matter. But it was a person that you accused of stealing jokes, all right? And, okay. And I had never heard this story. J? Starts with a J. Yep. I had never heard this story until that night. And someone <laughs> said, hey, I haven't seen him in a while. I heard he stole some jokes. And I didn't I call him out on stage. I didn't do anything like that. It was just me and him by ourselves at the sign-up sheet. And he was like, hey, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. And I was like, hey. Haven't seen you in a while either. I said, did you, I heard that you might have stole some material before. And that's what I said to him. And I was like, so tra someone said that Travis said that you might have stole some jokes. And he was like, yeah, we talked about that. We worked that out. Everything's fine. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I haven't seen him since. So. He, he showed up the other night. Okay. So if he listens to this, he'll know what's happening. And that's fine. And it's not even a big deal. Uh, but I did address it because I don't think that shit's cool. I think it took me four years to make 30 minutes of jokes, and they're not even all funny. <laughs> you know? The long, Here's the deal. The longer you're in the game, the quicker, the quicker you realize you don't have as much time as you thought you did. Yep. Next thing you know, you're five years in, and you're like, I thought I had 30 minutes when I was a year and a half in. Yeah. I've got 30 minutes now. And, yeah, and now in reality, workable. In reality, you still don't have 30. Right, because if you wanted to do a TV set or something, you got about 10 or 15 of really good shit that you had to condense. Fast forward to 10 years, you're like, man, I got a solid half hour. Yeah. You know, and it, it, dude, it honestly, what, my advice to new comics really fucks them up because they're not ready for what I'm saying. Right. They think they've got 20. They think they've got 40. And I'm like, no, you don't. And if, unless you were the, literally the one in like 10,000 guys that show up, that are just beasts off the bat. Yeah, and some people are long-winded and better writers maybe than us, and they might be able to get up there and talk for that long, but it's not a TED Talk, bitch. Like, Bro. we want jokes. We want laughter every 30 seconds. We want, it's got to be punchy, punchy, punchy. It all needs to connect. This is a, there's a real art form to it. I mean, it's not It's not a game. <laughs> like, it's a fucking, it's a yeah. for real thing. Like, when people you get paid to do this. This is a quick breakdown of how, like, people are like, well, fucking Bill Burr and Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura put out a new hour every year and a half, two years. I go, yeah. But guess how long they're on stage every week? Exactly. There's a, yeah. There's they're on stage at least seven hours a week. Yep. You're on stage 
32 minutes. I just said it 10,000 hours. It's like if, 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 if I'm doing four mics a week, I still only get 20 minutes per week. And then what? Somebody puts me on a guest set at no, Wiley's but after a month, and I get 25 minutes that week? After a month, you've been on stage for an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, I was going to say, do the, do the math. So hour 20. And then they're on stage. Let's just put five hours a week. Yeah. They do 20 hours a month, 240 hours a year. They're on stage working out new material. 240. And then to get to 10,000. For 000. you to get 240 hours on stage, you got to do comedy for a fucking decade. Like, that's the weird math that comedy people don't, don't, they don't put into play. Yeah. I don't know what math I just did. I'm kind of stoned. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> I just what started it, putting numbers in there. Right, like I was, all right. Is this a toaster? Put 10 years. Uh, okay, 10. Divided by 240. And that's how many hours an average person gets or how many the professional Let's comics Let's just see get. what comes up. I might be doing this wrong, too. You've got to do 41 minutes every time you go on stage. For 10 years. Yeah. That's and what that, I think that's what that is, right? And that'd be four times a week, 41 Probably, minutes. Yeah. yeah. To get the amount of time they get in one year. Yeah. That's a decade doing 40 minutes a week. Yeah. So they're doing like an hour a night, like if not more. Like that's what like uh, kind of trips me out. Like uh, you also uh, talk about uh, the comics not having like a full 30. Yeah. Uh, even people like Bobby Lee, like never like shot a special, never shot a special Been doing it for um, a long time, but he'll go to like these clubs. And like, I heard that he's notorious for the one up in, uh, Cleveland. I'm not trying to think of which one it was. Uh, uh hilarities, hilarities. I think it was uh, that he always harasses the chick for the, the good morning Cleveland. Yeah. Um, Mark Norman got her good too. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, Apparently, he goes up there and says, like, oh, I'm supposed to do, like, 40. Can I do 25? Dude. <laughs> and, like, and they say, yeah, you're Bobby Lee. Oh, well, like, pretty much. Like, He'll hey, give out guest sets and shit and just make it a what, is that yeah, a must. Know. And what people also don't understand is these guys have been in the game for 25 fucking years. Yeah, and that's how much material they got. 25 hour. years, bro. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> yes, Bert and Tom. Tom's got, what, seven specials or something? Some people are just really gifted. Yeah, dude. working on his but, eighth, I think. He's been, I mean, he's been in comedy for right around 20 years. Mm-hmm. That's 20 fucking years, dude. And he's got seven hours. He, he's one of those comics, just like Burr, where they just, it's not even funny anymore. It's just like they're just real life funny, and they are able to take things that happen to them and explain it to you in a punchy way. If, okay. That's what really good comics, that's like what Richard Pryor was doing in his prime and like yeah. Carlin. George when you Carlin's loved him. whole process was to write one minute of funny every week just one minute and at the end of the year he had 52 minutes of funny that's powerful shit and like to think about it that doesn't seem hard Mm -hmm. but imagine how much shit he threw away to get that one minute where he's like that's solid carlin was such a hard worker too i watched his documentary about him it's sad when he died he was working when he died i mean he was doing he had a residency in vegas so he was working up until the day he died he died in the hotel where he was performing you know don rickles don rickles same way Carlin, too, though, I heard this. He, the reason he put out a special every year, which he had, like, what, 10, 15? He had a bunch of them. So many, is because he had, like, six kids, too. And he, he had bills out the ass. He was a gambler. Like, he had to work is that in Vegas now, imagine and do his shows every year. If he was young year. enough to where he started in the 80s mm-hmm. versus the 60s. If he started in, in the, the 80s, heyday, he'd be, he would have been multi, multi million. Fucking extremely rich. Yeah. He was already, he was rich, but not like. Segura rich or fucking or Kevin, Bill Burr rich. Or Kevin, Kevin Hart, rich. Hart. What the or fuck? Even Laird, or even Layer the Cable Guy rich. He just came along and just, I mean, when Dude. I was a kid, I remember when he was just doing like movies like the, with the rappers and shit. And then now he's one of the biggest celebrities. In I the was world. sitting in the Richmond Funny Bone. Kevin Hart was supposed to be there the next week. And the manager comes out and goes, Well, Kevin Hart just canceled. And I didn't know who the fuck he was. I was like, Who's Kevin Hart? And the manager goes, uh, Probably the next fucking big thing to ever come out of stand up comedy. TV, oh, oh, it's a black. I gotta put the. Uh, keep telling me about Kevin Hart. I gotta put the logo and, back up, here. dude. And I didn't like. This is fifteen years ago, fourteen years ago. I did had no idea who the fuck Kevin Hart was. Yeah, but he was supposed to be there following week and canceled the canceled his gigs, and then next thing you know, he's literally just exploding. But the last ten years is where he's really got into his stride and like. 
became who he is today. Yeah, when he well, he got his own production company. Yeah. He started getting deals with every fucking network out there. But when you endorsements. watch how hard he works, you feel like a lazy piece of shit. Hmm. For sure. No, <laughs> this is what I think, bro. Like, if I didn't have a full time job and I was able to like get paid for touring and like get monetization from my show. Like I would, that I would, I swear to God, I would work that fucking hard. I'd be, I'd be working out if I didn't have to do my regular job. Like I would be doing these all day. I'd hire people to cut these shows, and so I have more time to book and write movies and do all that shit. I would love to do that shit. Like I think that would be amazing. Like to, to live that lifestyle. That's eventually what I really want, bro. Like I'm not saying I, I, I have to uh, work any hard. Like I'm not saying I work as hard as Kevin Hart, but I feel like I have that kind of drive and that kind of work, work ethic. Like. I mean, I'm not bragging at all because I want to. I want to remain like a humble person no matter what. But like, I swear I put like 80 hours a week, like sometimes more, if you count like actually working, and then like cutting these interviews and like recording them, and then I have to play them all back and edit the clips and subtitle these motherfuckers and like make dinner for my family <laughs> and like, is, you know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. so much shit, dude. That like. I feel like I, I kind of love it. And there's certain people, like the Rogans and the Kevin Hart's of this world, like The Rock. I look up to those people a lot, and I feel like, you know, if I work really hard someday, maybe fucking I could get that too. I, who knows? It's I, never impossible. It's not impossible, dude. I, Nothing's impossible. If you believe in it enough and you work hard, like, it you, just, you just got to do it. And I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a funny motherfucker, and you've been doing this for a long time, and uh, I... I do know how to I'm write a joke. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for real, you know, you you um, helped me a lot when I was first coming up and like, and I was like a younger comic, which I still am a younger. I've only been doing this four years, but still very young as far as um, comedy is like dog years, but backwards. You know what I mean? It's like you got to be like a hundred in comedy years to be funny, for real, for real funny. And, you know, but it's like, I feel like uh, we don't all like get a really warm welcome like when you come into the scene and so like to have people uh like mentors and people that you you're able to look up to and like and think like oh maybe someday I can be like that person or I can be closing these shows out I can be I can have this network like this person like you're definitely one of those people like that I first met when I was you know doing it when I was a little bit younger that I you know that I kind of thought that I looked up to you is what I was saying and you know there's so. a weird misconception about me you, you are an asshole. That's not a misconception. No, oh, no, no, no. I'll admit that. I'm a total asshole. But you're not an asshole, but certain people don't know how to take you. You're, you're good hearted about it. I am but not you, you're not, coming you don't have at a filter. you to be an asshole. Yeah. I'm coming at you to help. Right. You know, but there's people in, every, in each scene, even like Columbus and Cincinnati and Indy, that literally don't think I'm a good comic. That's, they've never seen me do a real show either. Right, you're not working those clubs out there because they haven't They've seen, seen you do me do an doing. open mic. Yeah. And I go to an open mic to do brand new stuff that's never been said before or it's the second time I've said it. That's what I use open mics for. I'm not using open mics to polish up my old shit. Mm -hmm. that, that's, what I, that's what I use to get paid. I'm not giving you the jokes I get paid to tell. I'm giving you the jokes that I'm trying to get worth getting paid to see. Mm -hmm. And I go to open mics and I'll see guys that have been doing it seven years, nine years, do the same five minutes week after week after week. And I'm like, bro, fucking get rid of the shit that's not getting laughs and fill it in with new stuff. Like, put the new stuff in there. Why are you keep beating this five minutes into the ground? Yeah. You got one joke out of that five that's working. Take that out. That's your joke you got out of that five. Bring your new five up. Mm -hmm. So these people have seen me do sometimes just – Eat a fat dick, bro. Like, and that's that's fine. That's what op open who, mics who are to eat bomb? it. Yeah, yeah. Who here's here's the deal. New shit. Bobcat Goldthwait said, "If you crush every time you go, you hit a microphone, you're a hack." He goes, "That's including open mics. If you crush every open mic and every set, he goes, you're a hack. You're stealing jokes." Yep. Because there's no way. Every every comic, Chappelle, everyone, they fucking eat it. Mm -hmm. They have jokes that never get laughs. It's something they personally thought was funny. And it just doesn't come out right. It doesn't, you can't find the way to say it. So you get rid of it. Fucking uh, Rogan was just talking to Gilbert Godfrey on his podcast. And they go, dude, don't you hate it when you write a brand new bit? You can do it. 9-11. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have an inside joke about Gilbert Godfrey. That's funny. Okay. Um, 
They was like, don't you hate when you write a joke and the first night you do it, it fucking kills. And then every time you do it after that, you get nothing. Yes. Rogan goes, he goes, sometimes jokes just go away. Jokes yeah. literally go away. Yeah. The moment is lost, especially the topical shit. Yeah. I find that too. I had this one that was killing about R. Kelly and then this is two months ago in the news and now I don't even do it anymore because I don't feel confident that people are, it's even relevant, right? Because there's such a high fucking stream of things happening. Yeah. Dude, a guy named Jason Dixon. Um, you ever wrote? You ever read the book I Killed? Stories of Road Comics. No. He wrote a whole article in there about. Um, I know Jason Dixon though. I know of him. He was on Crashing with Pete Holmes, right? Is it the same guy? I don't think so. He wrote for Rodney Carrington a lot back in the day. Good, great road comic. Uh, is he from New York? No. Oh, then no, he's from a different uh, guy. Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, but. He, he had a lot of history with comedy, and the best advice he gave me years ago was there's two types of jokes in this world. There's timely material, and there's timeless material. Timeless, you can tell today, and 20 years from now, that same joke should get a laugh. Yeah. He goes, timely material, you have a shelf life. You have to really understand when that joke's no longer valid. So it might work for two weeks, but then you have to get rid of it, and then you got to replace it with something else. So that's like those are, the, those are only two types of jokes you can write. Things that are going to have a shelf life and ones that you should be able to use forever. So I started writing jokes that I could use forever. Yeah. A lot of my bigger jokes now that get the biggest laughs, I've been doing for 14 years. But along the way, I've, I've made them better. You made them so good that now it's like the, the tag, the met, like it's, it's all so lined up and like you know where to put it. And, I, and to this day, I will still add extra shit to them. I was going to say that and I had this uh, discussion with someone recently like, Depending on where you are regionally, will you will you like nip some of the fat off, or maybe add a little bit more? Bro, it depends on where I'm at. In my, like, in your act, also. The other night we did a show in Indiana in Fort Wayne, and I closed on a joke that I've never closed on. Right, the main punchline got such a big laugh, I ended the joke. You didn't tag it. I didn't finish. I didn't do the tags for it. Because the, the the line that where the joke originally stopped with me before I started tagging it got a huge laugh. And I was like, that's my time, everybody. My name's Travis Charles. Yeah. Other comics that I know and seen will push for those tags I, I, just because yeah. they wrote them. Yeah. You don't have to finish a joke. That's true. Even in the middle of your act, if a bit that you don't normally do gets a fucking, like a round of applause, fuck them tags. Yeah. Take that, take that and go into your next bit. I did the same thing. I learned that early on because I swear, like the joke that I close with a lot, um, like I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it, but it's like I the the punchline gets such a big laugh, and I'm so addicted to like starting well and ending well. Mm -hmm. Like fuck the middle of the set. I'm gonna mess a joke up here and there. I'm gonna forget something. I might throw in something new, but like if they if I come out strong and I really get them on board. Mm -hmm. And then also if I end well and like make them remember me and it's like professional, there's a level of professionalism to being able to end on a good laugh mm -hmm. and, and introduce the next comic or bring the host back up or whatever. There's definitely a level of professionalism involved in it. Self-aware. Yeah. And you have to like remember, yeah, I'm in the club. I'm doing a job. It's like even though I just had fun and I was up here doing me, I now have to snap back into reality. And there's a huge part of me that doesn't like the tag if I get a really big laugh on the, uh, on the end. And it actually... I think it makes my set better to me because it shows creativity if you're able to tag it. And as a writer, you're like, I got gold right here. I don't want to. I don't want to give this up. I don't want to. I don't want to not say it. But it's like you have to be realistic and be like, the point is to get a laugh. Mm -hmm. It's clever. It's funny. But it's over. And like, I think, yeah, I think that's a that's Dude, definitely I, a good I thing do to it, do. It's just editing on the fly. It's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. Yeah. And then I find places to insert jokes that I didn't. If a cr if crowd work is happening with me, like if it presents itself, and I, my brain's like, yo, this joke will fit perfect right now. I've had this forever. I will fucking flip it out. It'll, yeah. it'll come right out like crowd work, and it looks like I just fucking made it up. Yeah, those are the I, best. And I'll look over at John and Congo. You see where that joke just came out of nowhere? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're, like, they're, they're just flicking me off like I fucking, like I hate you. Yeah. But get your brain to working like that, man. And if like, because I've seen comics end a set. Boom, big pop, nine minutes in. They're doing a 10-minute set. Big fucking pop in nine minutes. Bye. Good night. I don't need that extra 60 seconds. I'm fucking done. And you're not even that confident about the closer. Nope. <laughs> you're like, fuck it. Bro, because sometimes, sometimes some of your mediocre jokes will fucking just kill. Yeah. If you, if you really have them. There's like, and there's, I don't, there's something, 
like it's hard to explain it, I guess, because I don't really know how to recreate it when I'm up there. But when you really got them and you know it's going good, there's like there's like a nervousness about it. Like I don't want to I don't want to fuck this up. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's almost that self aware thing that we were just talking yeah. about. It's like I don't want to I don't want to blow this. Like do I really need to try this new fucking thing? Like it's going so good. Sometimes I'll even skip uh, jokes that are like really good just because in my head. It brings me the the joke after that, and for whatever reason, sometimes the uh, like I'll work in a new segue or find a new way to approach it, and it's like that one just fit better sometimes, right? And you'll like you'll lose a whole minute, mm-hmm. but it makes more sense and it gets laughs, and it's like the BPM is just there, dude. I fucking I've started I've started a joke with a setup. Something happened in the audience. I go into the audience, and then I get such a big laugh. Whatever the fuck just happened? Yeah, I go. I'm not even going to finish that joke. It's <laughs> yeah. not as good as what just happened. I'm going to move on. That's so true. And people are like, all right. Yeah. Like, cause they're, they're like, fuck yeah, bring it on. And then yeah. like, you just leave that shit alone. Yeah. And go right into what, whatever the hell else you want to do next. That literally happened to me when I was featuring. I was featuring for my first time a couple weeks are ago. Are you doing drugs? No. Yeah, um, I'm smoking some weed. I know you're not, a, <laughs> you're not a big weed smoker, but we have taken some edibles together before. Yes. Uh, we got spaced out. Do you want a little thing of butter to take with you? No, I'm good. Dude, somebody just gave me, like, three containers of it, and they're just little, like, you know, one-ounce sauce containers. If you want one, I'm serious. I'm my kids will eat it. Uh, well, yeah. No, it's. I don't know if they would. It stinks. Yeah, I made buttered toast. I'm not going to school. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. That's, like, my, that's like my biggest fear. That's why, like, I, I, have a, I have a... I don't even really keep edibles in the house. Just the butter. They make the edibles look like they're for children. That's, That's the problem. why it scares me. Yep, I don't fuck with it. If I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna have a little bit of the butter and just have a spoonful on some toast, or, or, or like in my meal if I ever want it. You know, Robinette. Now and then. Robinette gave me a gummy bear a couple of weeks ago, and we went to um, Julia's over in South Southside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Julia's nightclub. Yeah, yeah. Oh we go to Julia's, God. and like Joe forgets I took it. Right? I didn't forget because <laughs> we get there. I took it at Wiley's. Drove to Julia's. And normally, it, the shit don't bother me that bad, unless it's a bunch. So I get to Julia's, and I get a cup of water, and, like, we're just standing there, and uh, Dusty Harvey's with us. Dusty literally fucking danced for, like, four fucking hours by himself. It was Did hilarious. he take one, too? He was just drunk. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> he calls his wife. She's like, yeah, just have fun. Like, whatever. Like, dude, he's fucking... She doesn't anyway, give a fuck. He's insane. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm just standing there, and I, I, I feel myself, like, just teetering back and forth. Like, just slowly doing this. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Like, I'm not drinking. Yeah. Then I went, oh, you fucking had a gummy bear, you idiot. <laughs> Your inner voice kicked in. It did. It did. And I'm just sitting there drinking a cup of water, and I'm holding onto a chair, and I'm just staring into the dance floor. And Joe comes up and starts talking to me, and I was like, what? He goes, what's wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. He goes, <laughs> Oh, you're high. I'll leave you alone. Let you because it looks like you're finally enjoying it. And I went, nah. I just started laughing. <laughs> and they were talking to two chicks, and I walked over to them. I mean, Joe was. I walk over to them, and I'm trying to like chime in. And the whole time in my head, I'm like, make sure you speak in a normal tone. <laughs> Like, don't scream. Don't get too close to their face. Your inner dialogue was so kind, dude. My, my dialogue's so so chill. He's legit. So this chick was like. Tell me a joke. And I was like, how did you know I was funny? <laughs> and like, <laughs> and then I'm like, it don't work Show that way. already told her you were a comedian. They must have told her I was a comic. Yeah. And I was like, how'd you know? She goes, ah, they said you're famous. And I'm like, oh, you're famous. Dude, I'm. I- <laughs> you told the girl you were famous. Yeah. You never even met her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking back up because I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> you walked away. I just backed up. and I was like, I'm going to go drink some more water. And I'm just <laughs> chew, fucking just chewing ice, staring at people dance like a fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, I don't want to talk with you. Mind if I watch you dance from over here? Dude, and I kept, I kept <laughs> finding myself standing at the edge of the dance floor, <laughs> oh like God. doing one of these. <laughs> just smiling like, hey, you want to dance with me? <laughs> But not talking to no you one. You couldn't find the, the I words. Be, no, it was like I, I was like, you want to dance? Like making my eyes like you want to dance? I'm like, or like you want to go back in my yeah, van? You ever just get a, a good thought on your head and you're like, you just sticks on your tongue and you're like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eventually, and you just ruminate about it for an hour and you never do it. Yeah, like I want to say something nice and I'm like, you'd probably fit in my trunk. Like that didn't come out right. What was that? <laughs> oh my god. How much do you weigh? Speaking of people getting in your trunk, you have a hilarious uh, t- 
TikTok or it might be on Reels with uh, with Kyle as the Uber driver. Yeah, that's funny as hell. That, that was literally the first take. Tell me the story about this and like your TikTok shadow ban and all this shit because this is super. I know we were talking about this at the club and this is super interesting to me. Like what? Well, how, this video, how all this happened. It's just it's just called like wrong Uber driver is what I called it. Yeah, we went to breakfast and we're sitting in my car just talking, right? And uh, I was like, dude, we should make videos together. He was like, oh, yeah? It's like, I don't know what the fuck to make. And I forgot whose idea it was for it to be an Uber driver. I was like, get in the back seat and we'll just fucking do something. So I get the camera up and I'm pointing at my face like this. And as he gets in the back seat, I go, hey. That's all it was. Then he goes, oh, oh hey, man, uh, would you mind putting your mask on? And I was like, why are you in my car? And he's like, uh, he's got the seat belt like halfway. He's like, Paul, you're like, are you, are you an Uber? I go, no, but you're going to fucking go with me now. And like, I fucking put it in drive. And he's like, oh, go oh, there, God, Jesus. Yeah. And tries to get out of the car. And dude, then we cut it off. I watched the video. Yeah. He can, goes, can you send it to me, Zach? You already did, didn't you? Dude, he no, goes. I think I sent it to you on your uh, messenger. Okay. I'm not sure. Like, I, I won't be able to find his reels. Um, Kyle goes, all right, we need to redo that. I went, nope. And I'm literally on TikTok with it already. Posting it and hashtagging it and like po- like I posted it. We filmed it and I posted it in less than two minutes. And no, that shit creeps me the no, fuck out, bro. No, Have y'all talked about no. that yet? No, I, I don't want to talk about it, dude. Someone's got to. I don't <laughs> want to talk about it. Stop it. Stop it. I don't know why I even that have that. I, I'm glad that it was. It's on him, isn't it? Dude, we'll dude. talk off camera. I'll tell you a story. Yeah, we, yeah, we told it will, because that is some creepy shit. Trust me, buddy. I'm telling you. Um, There's a lot going on with that dude right now, by the way. I forgot what we were even looking for. The reels. Oh, yeah, the reels. He sent He sent. Did I tell me. you about... Uh, about uh, he probably listens. I'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm it was a crazy sure, I'm story. Sure, I'm pretty sure uh, Johnny and I are on his hit list now. I can't find oh, it. I think I heard something about what's happening. Oh man, you probably did. I'll tell you. We'll tell you off cam. Though. But anywho, uh, anywho, yeah. back to the fucking TikTok. Anyway, so I post it. The original. This is my original account. I post it, and then within like five days, it's at like four million views. And Kyle's like, I fucking hate that video. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. And whatever, it was doing fine. I posted more videos. My account was doing very well. My my original TikTok account. I was going live every night. I was talking to people. Fucking, I was getting about 1,000 to 2,000 followers every two days. It was jumping up crazy. My biggest video had like 14 million views. I had fucking like four and a half million likes. Like it was, like it was, it was going great. Every like four or five videos went viral. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going like, gonna to make a tour out of this one day. Hell yeah. And then I post a video... <laughs> Of me in a giant plastic bag. Yeah. Okay. Can you send that to me? <laughs> if you could send it to Zach, can you? Could you pull it up on your computer? Is that possible? I don't think. Are we, are we friends on Facebook? I think we are. I don't know. Are we? Send me a message and I'll send it to you while I'm talking. Um, so, anyways, I, do you, you want to play the video as I'm talking about? Yeah, it? I want right. to play it. Yeah. So I don't want to. Uh, yeah, send, I want to actually go ahead and play send it. it to you and uh, do it on there. Send me on I, Messenger. Yeah. Because I I'd have to download it on here and. Okay. Yeah, some, we don't have to do yeah. all that. Just send it to me on Messenger, Trav, and then I'll play them. I'll play them both if you have them. Copy um, link. But yeah, and then for the people at home, you guys can follow Travis on uh, not on TikTok anymore. We're gonna get no, to no. That. Yeah, we're, you we're, still have one. Follow me on TikTok. Okay. I, like if, if this if this works, I want I want it to totally be on TikTok and Instagram. Okay. But um, let me send this video so to you. Is this what you got banned for? Yes. This is hilarious. He showed this to me at Wiley's. And, uh, why can't I find you? It's so this? funny. And I could see why. Like when he, when, when, he, when he tells us why he got banned, you're going to understand it. But the first time that you saw it, it's <laughs> funny. If you're like a, if you're a, you've got a com- comic brain. And speaking of having a comic brain, I'll, I'll, I want to talk about this. It's, I texted it to you. Okay. Okay. So speaking of having Hopefully a comic that's your brain. Number. No, it should be. That's it. Um, yeah, so... Oh, yeah, this is so funny. Oh, my God, funny, there dude. it is. This is so funny. So... <laughs> okay, hold on. First... <laughs> I need to download it so I can cut it in after. First of all... If you can send me the actual one, or can I save it? First of all, you can save video... The original video did had no. 
I had no Did music. Did you put that on Reels? Uh, oh, my God. I'm bro. going to repost it on Reels. I most definitely would. I put it on Facebook when I got banned from TikTok, before it was Reels. And it got, like, another fucking, like, half million views. So, anywho. It looks like a dead body, right? right? So, here's the thing. But the original video is no music. Okay. It's just me in the plastic bag thrusting forward like I'm a giant penis in a condom. Yeah. That was the concept. My mouth was full of milk. <laughs> after two or three good thrusts. made out of. After two or three good thrusts, I just spit the milk out of my fucking mouth as hard as I can. And then I do the, like, 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 like a dick jumps when you're finished. I do that in the floor, like I shake. <laughs> and then I lay down real slow and I make eye contact with the camera. <laughs> done. Video's done. <laughs> I fucking get up, I play it, I'm dying laughing in my apartment, and I fucking, I post it on, on TikTok, I'm like, this is going to go fucking crazy. I post it, and then every time I post it, it'll go, your video's posted. I hit refresh like 30 seconds later just to see if I get one view. Refreshed, 5,000 views already. Holy shit. I went, shit. this is going to go mega viral, I'm going to make so much fucking money off this video. Yeah. Refresh again, your account has been banned. I went, what the fuck? Holy shit. That quick. People were reporting it because they thought it was someone dying. In oh, a pla- my God. How fucking stupid are people? No one does not. They thought it was a snuff film. They, they, they thought someone was suffocating in a plastic bag. Yeah. So then I reposted it. It said, I am a, you can't put penis or dick or nothing on TikTok. Yeah. I, I, I'm a, I think I said I, I'm a peen or a glizzy. I forgot what it said. <laughs> What's a glizzy? A glizzy is a dick. That's a term on TikTok for dicks. What? Glizzies. I don't want to fucking know. Yo, I think my kids were saying glizzy the other day. Dude, I got to get to the bottom of this shit. Bro, watch TikTok. You'll learn get all your glizzy off my back. <laughs> get your glizzy off your my glizzy back. Your glizzy tastes weird. Um, <laughs> get your glizzy off my back. I'm going to use that. I'm going to do a clean set. So I post again. It's like no, no one was hurt in this video. Like this like this is whatever. It didn't do very well. My, dude, my, can't, my account has been shadow banned. So recently, it's getting better. Like, I'm starting to get followers and views again. I think something's happening. Yeah. And they're starting to give me people again. You use the new email or something? Or? I, u- I used a new, a new thing, a new name. Yeah. The new name on TikTok is at Travis Charles underscore one. Okay. I just followed you on there. I, followed, I thought I followed your old one, but I got that one now, too. The old one, I, I wish I had it back. But anyways. But yeah, that's the story of that video that got me banned. Yeah. Um, that's fucking hilarious. Dude, I posted on Facebook right after that. Like, I got banned from TikTok for this video. It started going crazy viral on fucking Facebook. I went, what the fuck? Facebook was like, yeah, we got your back. Yeah. They were like, don't worry about Facebook it. Facebook don't give a shit. No. But now I need to repost it because now Reels is different. Facebook will show you murders for real. Like, that was that was light. They were like, nah, this is, <laughs> this is like light compared to what we usually show. Uh, dude, so go ahead and watch I reposted, this shit. I reposted the fucking uh, Uber video on, on Reels. Okay. If I go to it right now. Yeah, Re- Reels is jumping. You guys follow me on Reels also. I got, I've just, Travis just hit me to this. It's like Facebook's version of TikTok. I got uh, over 10,000 plays in the last week just from the, the, the clips. So thank you for that. I posted it. And it's got 3.2 million views in the last four and a half, five days. Shit. 130,000 likes, 25,000 shares. Yeah. And 2.1 thousand fucking... Text me your link for that. I'll follow you on there, too. Comment. Uh, he said he keeps seeing you pop up in his reels, too. Do you follow yeah. him? Do you, do you have to... Like, I don't know how that works. Do you just... They put me in the algorithm, because I'm posting on, like, every day or every other day. And it's somehow we're all connected, because we message each other well, and shit. Well, that, and then it's also, got, like, when people share stuff so much... It just goes into every like different real channels. Yeah, because you, know, you, you can change your real channel and like you can go to different ones. I'm telling you, I'm though, not if I would have heard that, that try not to laugh one, the, when, me laughing. Yeah, when when uh, if I was tripping or something, it would immediately <laughs> put me in a bad trip. For real, I didn't it watch it. it was, Bro, so let's let's play that one. See if you can bring it up <laughs> because like I, I was sitting there, I was like, do you ever watch videos and like think like. If I was tripping my ass off right now, that this would immediately put me in a bad trip. Yeah, dude. Like the other—that's <laughs> exactly what happened. The with other Travis's day, my video. Oh, shit, I think my dog's out here. I'm gonna have to put him out. That lamp's gonna fall again. Dude, I had a fucking. Uh, I'll cut this part out. It's the cat. It's the cat. Yeah, I have to get her. Those. Dude, my whole. She's fucking, right here. She's the cat cool. just came by here. Yeah. Well, I saw the lamp just. I saw the lamp just now, and it started swaying. Uh, Do you see it? It's still got a little bit of a, a sway. I see a little to it. bit. Dude, they, her and my dog were fighting earlier, and they knocked it down, and it broke one of the light. We only that was our last replacement bulb, so I can't, <laughs> I can't have one break again. This shit was expensive, and I just sent it to you. Christmas is coming, so this video I just sent you is me. I, I was laying there, and like, if I think if I start trying to laugh, I'll laugh at myself laughing, 
and then you'll hear what it turns into. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. What? <laughs> this is you making yourself laugh? Bro. And you're trying to tell people not to laugh at your laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, so crazy, saying. dude. You're the only person who could think of something like this. Bro, I was like, who I was like, fuck you. Because <laughs> people like it when you laugh. That's true. Half Kyle said that about Impractical Jokers, like the science of it, because I love that show, and I and my whole family loves that show, and I've never, I've never fucking thought about it. But <laughs> when you hear the laughter, he said that he's like, even in the intro, he was like, when people are laughing, it just makes you feel. It makes good. you want to laugh. It makes me want to laugh too. Yeah. So the beginning of this of video laughs. is me faking, right? I'm faking laughing, forcing it out, and then I wheeze one time, and I'm like, that's hilarious. So when the end of the video, when it's like. <laughs> That's legit me laughing. Yeah. And like almost passed out. You couldn't get your breath. I almost fucking passed out. Oh my God. That's so funny. It's so contagious too. That's why I love laughter. You were talking about that too earlier about like as far as when you're doing jokes and you're actually up there on stage and like some person laughs because they get it. Like other people in the crowd don't want to miss out. They start seeing that laugh and they start hearing that laugh and it's like that crowd mentality. Like they get with it. And yeah. it feels good too. It's not wrong if you're laughing and you don't fucking know why because someone else is la- or whatever and you're drunk and it's like a moment. It's like just feels Bro, good to be participating thing, in it. Favorite thing on stage is when I see a person laughing so hard that they're legit like holding their chest and like yes. I can I get to laughing. Yeah. Because I'm like I know what that feels like. You laugh a lot when you're up there too if with I, people. If I'm legit laughing, I'm having a good time. Uh-huh. If you don't see me laugh that much during my set, I'm just fucking phoning it in. And Do you think that helps your stage presence? Like when absolutely. you're when you're up there and you really feel good? When you are laughing genuinely, the audience catches on to it, and they're like, oh, he's having a good time with us. Yeah. And it's a party. Um, there's people who fake laugh. Like, when you ever see someone go, <laughs> that's fake as fuck, dude. Don't fucking do that. Right. It, like, but they do it every time they do that bit. Mm-hmm. Like, they're actually laughing. You know, it's, that's, that's not how laughter works. Right. I'll be laughing so hard sometimes, I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to go, hold on, everybody. <laughs> I yeah. got to catch my breath. All right. And then they're all like, whew, now they're on the edge of their seats like, this motherfucker's having a good time. Even if the joke's not that good. They're like, dude, we're, we're having a good time together. Right. That's all, they, that's all, dude, that's all they want. They want to come in, forget about their fucking stupid day, forget about their dog that died or whatever the hell it is. They're coming in to laugh. That's the main goal for showing up. All you got to be is fucking fun with them. That's, dude, that's why Kyle is so fucking good. Because he can be in a shit mood. Yeah. But he turns on the comedian when he gets on that stage. Fucking dances around, fucking crowd work, jokes, blah, blah, blah. They have no idea he's having a shitty day. Right. Right? And that's part and of the job as a comic. Too. It helps him. Like, it helps him feel better. Yes. That's part of the job as a comic. You're there to make people feel better. Oh, we got to fly in yeah. here. It's, I'm talking I, shit. Fly show up. I know. I got, AD, <laughs> I got fucking ADD really bad and then a fly. We've been at for an hour? Okay. Yeah, I got ADD really bad. Um, dude, I feel like I could talk to you all night. <laughs> an is, hour just flew by. This is when was, Joe Rogan does three-hour podcasts. Dude, he just did a four-hour one with Snoop Dogg. That's a long one. I was just looking. I haven't watched I'll it I'll listen yet. to that tomorrow on the way to Michigan. I was going to say, it'll take me a couple of days. I'll get it in one go. Yeah, you'll get it the whole time. You got about a six-hour ride. Five and a half, so I'll do that and listen to something else. Dude, do you remember when we uh, went on that little mini tour up there and we hit the, the towns in Michigan a couple yep. years back? Do you ever talk to those own, the owners of those I clubs just anymore? I to the dude um, at the one in Jen's hometown like a, two weeks ago. Hey, what do you he think? He saw me outside. He goes, hey, comedy guy. Yeah. You got a fly on your shirt. Do I? Um, he went away. He's wanting me, bro. He was like, I'm sweet. I'm a He's sweet bitch He's trying to get revenge tonight. for the one that you killed last week. Yeah, I know. This is the thing is the fucking, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's your cat. <laughs> it's your cat probably brings him in when we're trying to get her in. <laughs> so come inside. That's true, too. Yeah, you fucking got to swing that screen door open and shit. No, the dude that gave y'all weed. There's been in the, oh, yeah, no, he paid us in, well, he didn't even pay us in weed. He paid you, and then you paid all of us for the show. But he came up afterwards, handed me a half ounce of weed, the owner of this club. And a vape pen, and a, didn't he? And a, and a cartridge, a vape cartridge. And he was like, I make those myself. That's homemade distillate. I grow that weed myself. And I was like, what? And we're outside. It's like, the. it reminded me of fucking Alaska. It was like the middle of nowhere. 
right? It was a town that was like on a That's lake. That's the town I live in when I go up there. It was crazy, bro. I hate it. And it was just a bunch of people smoking weed outside, huddled up. That's like, all they have time to do. Yeah, and they and they were explaining to me that people in Michigan, if you're over 18, you can grow nine plants per adult in yeah. your household. So these guys got like 20, 30 plants in their house of all different weeds and all these butters and all yep. these. They're rubbing it on their face. No yep. wonder they're making lotions and fucking CBD shit. You know what yep. I mean? Like they get bored. There's so much of it. There's guys who just have fucking hordes, hordes and hordes and hordes of pot. Yeah. Just bucket, five gallon buckets full of fucking pot. They've nothing. They, they can't sell it. Yeah. Cause it's insane. They just have tons. It's just, they can give it to anybody for like Christmas presents. Yeah. They got to send. Yeah. They got to give it out. They said that, uh, in California, bro, like it's like, uh, 50% of the pot that they grow up there is, like, not for medical or state use at all. Like, it gets shipped out to the rest of the country. Half of it's gone. Bro, the, some of the dispensaries here in Dayton, I know a girl that works at one, she says that once a month they have to get rid of all the samples. Yep. And they're just throwing away just fucking boxes and boxes of joints. Yeah. And fucking oh, wax. I, no, I know somebody who actually, like, I don't know if they were dumpster diving or what, but somebody's got a, a bunch of hands on some seeds and some clones from one of those places around here. And uh, they got their own shit going on now. Yeah. It's only a couple. It's like a small thing where they got one lamp. They're supposed to destroy it when they throw it away, but if you, they just get lazy. If you get the plants and they're still rooted, you can yeah, you can get a clamp, clone yeah. from it. Yep. Yeah, they don't know what's going on there. That reminds me of like uh, Fight Club when they break into the fucking um, liposuction clinic and they're stealing all that fat. Yeah, it's that's the gross. same thing. You jump over some barbed wire in the night, you might be able to find some shit. I'm dumpster dough. Have you? Oh yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> how, well, for, how long do you want to do? Uh, we we're not gonna go too much longer. I was gonna say if we can get like one more good laugh out, I was gonna end it. There's a whole <laughs> like uh, following on TikTok. Like you, if you get it in your algorithm of people dumpster diving like Game Stops and stuff like that, oh, getting for sure. hundreds of dollars of stuff. For real, dude. Yeah, that's up your alley because you're like I've a hustler. filled up a Honda you, you Odyssey. Resell a lot of shit. We used to fill up a Honda Odyssey every time we went out. Yeah, Barnes and Noble, GameStop. Bath and Body Works, Ulta makeup. Dude, we pulled out fucking $3,000 worth of makeup out of an Ulta dumpster that had never been touched. It yeah. was the uh, Kardashian makeup. It was in a big box. The box weighed about 60 pounds. Opened up all brand new. Sold every fucking bit of it. Um, my ex's brother, right when me and Jen like separated, he dumpster dove a store in Michigan. Pulled out $10,000 worth of perfume and cologne. Dang. I sold every fucking <clears throat> bottle of it. We we made about seventy five hundred dollars off of it, out of the dumpster. Holy shit! Yeah, so there's money in dumpsters, bro. No kidding. Magazines, yeah. books. I used to go to the Barnes and Noble, pull up boxes and boxes of magazines that aren't supposed to be on the shelf yet. Yeah, it's it, here. It is January like twenty eighteen. I got February and March Playboys. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> fucking Daniel. Is the camera on me? <laughs> it's it, it, show it's, me, show me. Look me in the fucking eye, America. <laughs> I'll squash you like a bug. All right, back to Travis, dumpster diving. I got a funny take on this, too. My mom used to dumpster dive. She didn't dumpster dive, but she used to go trash picking. Do you know what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom was one of those ladies that, like, that she lived on welfare. A lot of our house was furnished with things that she would find from the garbage, and it's, this is not wow. a joke. My mom knew the... <laughs> the day that the, 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 my mom knew the day that was trash day in all the surrounding cities and not just our city yeah. <laughs> because she would go around the night before and she would dumpster dive and I remember dude this one time I got so mad at my mother we had this old blue van and she's like hey do you want to do you want to take a ride with me tonight and I'm not thinking it's trash night who the fuck thinks like that when you're 14 years old right well, it happened to be trash night, so my mom wanted me to cruise because she had already spotted something earlier that was too heavy for her to load in the truck herself. And Been I'm, there, done that. She takes me, and she's like, I want you to get that shelf for me. And I'm like, Mom, I know these people. I was like, I'm not fucking doing it. I'm in high school like with these kids. And I'm like, you think I'm going to get out in front of their house and I'm going to take something, and then it's going to be in our house when they come over? I was like, I'm not doing it. Like... I felt like a piece of shit, but my mom, like, she didn't care. She didn't think about it like that. She was like, she used to say this. This is a, lock this in. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And you have a really good joke about that. I don't know if you want to nah. say it. You don't want to blow it on here. I don't here, care. No, it's, stupid. it's one of my favorite it's an jokes. It's joke. Will it's, you say it? Um, I'll start off by asking the audience, like, do you guys ever heard the old saying that one man's trash is to cue them to say another man's treasure yeah. and they do and I go no 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 it's another man's daughter <laughs> and then they fucking laugh and I'm like here, here we go like that's how it started off 
It's, it's a stupid bit. You open with that. So a lot. I used to open with it all the time. When I, yeah, now I'm opening with shows. the uh, black girl vagina joke. I don't think I've heard this. Really? No, I don't know. I haven't seen you perform in a while. I'll go, hello, cat. Hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome. This is uh, welcome. Our next guest is Zoe. Hi, Zoe. All right. No, the uh, the black girl vagina joke is, uh, guys, you know that uh, black girl pussy in that pause for a quick I second. I do know this joke. Just so they like, what the fuck? And I go, taste way better than white girl pussy. Yeah. And I go, that's because white girls don't know how to season it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, that's where we're going. Like, uh, and then if they laugh at that, I kind of have free reign to go where I want. Yeah. So far, I've opened it with it two or three times now as an opener. Yeah. And um, it allows me to kind of go into offensive shit rather fast. I think that's what's cool about you. Like, you, you were talking about, like, some comics that are new that are, like, kind of being edgy. And I feel like you're, like, not even edgy. You're, like, beyond the envelope in a lot of ways when you're up there. And I respect that. I respect the fact that you're not scared to um, speak your mind. And you even have a show called The Most Offensive Show. And, like, right, so people can see you uh, on TikTok. They can see you on Facebook, Instagram. And also you come to Dayton a couple times a year and you do The Most Offensive at Wiley's, right? Three or four times, three or four weekends a year. Yeah, you do it. And people should definitely go see that. I highly recommend that show. Super funny. You always bring people from all over the Midwest and all over the country sometimes. And you... You put on a hell of a show at Wiley's, and uh, I know you, you mentioned doing it somewhere else also, right? You're going to be doing it at another club in Virginia? I'm supposed to be doing it at a place called Sandman's in Richmond, Virginia. That's where you're from. Yep. And, and yeah, that's a that's a new club down there. Yep. So Real nice. Yeah. That's fucking dope, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for you. I'm glad that you came and talked to me today, and uh, I think a lot of people can relate to some of the stuff that you're saying as far as, like, the comedy, uh, the young comics, like, learning how to do it. Like that, because it makes it, us all better if they're better and if we're better. It like makes the shows better. It makes people respect the scene. So, I think it's super important. To, yep. To, for people to hear the shit that you were saying tonight, and uh, yeah, dude, this has been really fun. Thanks for coming. I hope you come on again. I feel like I really phoned it in. Like uh, I feel I'm super tired this week, but hopefully you come back in the future and we'll get a better we'll yeah. get a better story we'll on you. One. We'll do some funny shit because I know you you know fucking Burt Kreischer and you know Kevin Hart. You know a lot of these people, Dave Attell, right? You I don't know Dave. No, you don't you don't, you don't know Dave, but I know you can name some some big, big names and you've worked with these people. Yes. And I know you got a lot of stories and we didn't even get there tonight, but I, we're going to in the future for That'd sure. That'd be a whole other hour. That'd be a whole another couple hours someday. So yeah. we'll definitely bring you back. So thanks for coming tonight, bro. Okay. All right guys. Bye bye. bye.